The miners are instructed at the colliery in the use of safety appliances. This class of fireman is having a lecture on safety matters. The instructor is demonstrating the diffusion of gases. The men are drawn from the surrounding villages and the old practice of building homes near the pit head is abolished. Buses take the miners to their work. As soon as a new ship comes on, the miners go to the canteen and collect the food they will take with them underground. This usually consists of jam or cheese sandwiches carried in a dustproof tin box. These young miners do the lighter jobs near the pit bottom and elsewhere. The miners also take flasks of hot tea with them. They go from the canteen into the pit baths and change into working clothes. A separate locker is provided for each man's clean clothes. His working clothes are kept in another locker at the other end of the baths, which has a current of hot air running through it. The miner wears special protective clothing for his job, steel cap boots, and a safety hat for head protection, and to which he fixes his lamp. The miners are supplied with numbered checks, which they take with them to the pit bottom, and return when they finish work. Great emphasis is laid on each miner's personal safety. A cap lamp, worked from a light, portable battery, is worn by each miner. This lamp leaves both hands free to work, and gives a constant light. In this mine, one shaft is used for winding coal and one for men. The men use the downcast shaft. Each shaft is operated from its own winding engine house. Here again, the latest electrical braking and speed controlling devices have been installed to ensure the safety of the men. The cage holds 20 men at a time. The signal is given to the engine house and the descent of the cage is controlled by the engineman who keeps a constant watch on the indicators recording the position of the cage in the shaft. In two minutes, you are 1,200 feet below the fertile Scottish countryside. As the day shift arrives, they meet the men who have just finished work on the night shift, waiting to return to the pit head. The days of haphazard roof supports and blinding darkness are gone. Here are tube-like tunnels supported by steel girders lined with concrete slabs and lit by electricity. Every effort is made to maintain the same degree of tidiness underground that we saw on the surface. At the sharp bottom, the foreman allocates each man to his working place. All the roads leading from the sharp bottom are ventilated by a clean current of fresh air from the downcast shaft. This air is circulated throughout the mine and is controlled from the fan house on the surface. The fan drives the air down this tube into the mine. The used air escapes up the upcast shaft. Meanwhile, the miners who came on shift are nearing the work face. As the extent of the coal seams was known in advance, the main roads were formed and the coal is now being worked from them. At the coal face, strict attention is constantly paid to roof support. These men are securing the roof at the end of the shift. Sufficient holes are drilled in the cut coal and when the last one is completed, preparation is made for shot firing. A safety lamp is used to test for an explosive gas called fire damp. If present, a blue flame would appear inside the lamp. The miner extinguishes his cat lamp while he is making this test. The holes are then charged with explosive and sealed with clay. Stone dust is scattered along the face to prevent a possible coal dust explosion. 
When the men are well clear of the face, the shot is fired and goes another piece of coal. These men have finished their seven and a half hour shift, but before going home, they have a shower at the pit baths. Inside the baths, electrically driven brushes take the coal dust off their boots. The miners' welfare is given great consideration and emphasis is laid on health and cleanliness. Further, owing to the excellent working conditions and training, the accident rate is low. The miners here don't suffer from fatigue as in the past, and unrestricted, they enjoy their freedom at the end of a working day. <laughs>